saw how much families suffered. I saw that there was a real, a true lack of black men in the city. They were gone. They're gone. They're being eliminated, and families are suffering. Um, and now my daughter's in kindergarten. Um, some of you have heard me talk about, um, you know, compare the schools uh, to prisons because that's what it looks like when you're going to all black and all brown uh, elementary schools here in Philadelphia. And I'm concerned for your one year old, your one year old, I'm concerned for those of us who have little kids. And like, the three of us, we had a conversation where we're saying about education, what you're saying is we're just going to refuse to send our kids to school, right? And, um, and I sent my daughter to an all black public school here in Germantown this year, and I fought non stop. I, 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 to, for first, first day, my daughter came home from school, how was school? Bad. Why? My teacher screamed at me all day long that she was mean. Next day, how was school? Bad. Why? My teacher told me that she's the one who wrote the letter for my friend to go to a good school. And if I want to go to a good school, I'm going to learn to be quiet. Mm -hmm. And um, this is very much the impression and, and then the proof that I've had from dealing with the school system is that they're not teaching the things they are trying to be. They're uh, teaching fear-based submission. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're teaching the kids to shut up, yes. do what you're told. Yes. Um, and be polite, you know. And, um, and it's all about anticipating punishment. And I'm a Quaker. Um, I, I, when I, when I saw what was going on in my daughter's school, I saw uh, how some, I mean, so many of her friends I've known since they were babies, and I've known their families for so long. Um, but how quickly kids were labeled as being from bad families. Mm -hmm. uh, when when I stood up and said to my teach, to my kids' teacher, hey, screaming at these kindergartners is not an option. Um, you know, her and many other people told me, oh, you don't understand. That's the way you have to deal with these bad kids. That's what they're used to coming from these bad homes and these bad families. And that's what really brought the fight out of me because that's lies. I mean, the parents that I know, they love their children. They're trying to do everything they can for their children. They don't trust these schools. They don't even know what else to do. You know, so they're sending their kids to school. The kids might have great behavior, but they're coming home with behavior problems because they're trying to fight back so hard against these adults mm -hmm. who are being mean as shit to them, mm -hmm. labeling their families
anywhere from one to, you know, hour a week to several days a week to work on it. But can you give some both smaller suggestions and then larger suggestions? Well, I think it's important for people who have time, you know, time resources to search out organizations in the There's a lot of organizations time. That's my grandkids who are showing up for me. It's always there. There's a lot of organizations in the city that seriously need volunteers, and they're doing work. Um, most of the organizations in the city are well funded and well staffed. This is not doing that good really job in. Addressing the needs of returning citizens and our children. But there's a lot of organizations that are understaffed, underfunded. Search those organizations out, give them an hour or two a week, give them a day a week, um, give them a couple dollars. Do whatever you can do in a small way to attack the problem. Which ones are they? So, Center for Returning Citizens? Oh, okay. well, of course, I mean, I feel looking for places to volunteer and, and having. You know, well, fine well, you know. Us. Yeah. What? <laughs> HRC. <laughs> HRC, of course. There's a lot of organizations that we seem to be under the radar. You know, but one of the things we're trying to do is link the organizations together. Well, I was going to say that would probably help. So, yeah. We'll start doing that on my website. Um, I'll put in a list of places that we need to volunteer. Volunteers down there. Yeah, I was just saying, just from what I was, what I was speaking about earlier, um, you know, I take a, I take a similar, uh, I take a similar, I'll just close that door, I feel like I got something. Okay, okay. I take a similar um, zero tolerance approach. I take a similar zero tolerance approach uh, when I'm talking about media, which is, you know, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't um, go into clubs that are playing anti-black music. To me, music by kids I think is anti-black kid and music by. So anyway, it doesn't get more anti-black than that, you know. Like the point is, you may have a brother do it and nobody asks questions, you know. If you had somebody else come out, I'd kill it in a minute. Mm-hmm. It would be up, up, up you know. Mm -hmm. But um, so you know, I, I don't I obviously I don't support it at all. I don't. Um, Again, I'll get out of they give me a ride, they won't change it. I won't buy a t-shirt in the store that's playing it. You know, um, I won't buy a magazine that's supporting it on the cover. Um, I'm zero tolerance with it. I don't like music. I don't like media that is out there. You know, I won't go to a movie theater that's showing a movie that's made to make us look stupid, and that's the point of it, you know? Um, so I'm zero tolerance with that, because I feel like if everyone was zero tolerance with that, it would be going next week, you know? Um, so that's that's just something I feel like everybody can do. Yeah, I feel like if you see something going on that shouldn't be going on, don't take part in it. You know, I feel like that's your responsibility. If you see, you know, whatever it is, you know, be be, be it incarceration, be it glorification of nonsense, you know, to not take part in it. She had it. A solution. Uh,
and educate their kids. They're going to need some money to do it. Instant jobs in, in, in the state of Pennsylvania, the gas stations. For example, in New Jersey, you're going to need about thousands of jobs overnight. All the 3,000 people that was outside could have been working if they just let the kids have created the jobs that we hired the politicians to do. We told the politicians to create jobs. You got the crackhead and you got your son out there pumping gas for a dollar. They created a job and you got people who hate on that. But they went and created a job and we paid the people $100,000 a year to create a job and the kid went out there and washed your glass off for you and pumped your gas in the winter so you ain't have to get cold. So we need to focus on realistic things and begin to think outside the box. As far as the education, uh, prison system. The first thing that needs to be done is people need to begin to teach the kids how to think for themselves and not what to think. Because that's what the American school system is doing. And there are two teaching methods. One for some students to become producers, then they have a curriculum for some students to become consumers of the products that the producers produce. This is the cycle. This is why God is allowing this system to crash. He said that behold, all things pass away, and behold, all things become new. We got to ask ourselves this. Do we want to fight for what God is being done fit by the complaints here and the proof that I can show you that when I was in prison, all I had to do was worry about the knife. But when you send your child to that prison called school, ask them. They got to worry about guns if they argue with the wrong kid. And th th this is the entire war plan of Mr. Nutter up there. I'm from the state then, he's from Penn State. We've been playing a chess game. And I'm going to tell you what he's doing with the school thing real quick so you can understand the strategy that I'm done. But y'all need to understand what's happening. It's real simple. Y'all already know some about money. You, you already know that 80% uh, of the people that's in prison come from father's house. You also are uh, building prison cells based upon the reading schools of third grade. So we already know why they're specifically building 50,000 new beds that they intend to fill. You understand where I'm coming from? His, his strategy is to place the kids in a school where they know they're going to go to war at. This drug dealer go to this school, now this drug dealer go to this school, now this drug dealer go to that school, and that drug dealer go to that school, and all their nieces, nephews, and cousins is going to be caught up in a war. And the kids is going to be dying and going to jail faster than that new system that they said for the betterment of Philadelphia, signed by Mary Mother. They're going to fill that one with kids. The only kids in this city who can get a good education in a brand new school is the ones who commit crime and go to the new brand new facility on 48th and half. They're going to fill that with the babies that they put in the rival neighborhoods in the same school. There has been twice in the Bible, Pharaoh killed all the male children because I need to kill Moses. Kill all the male children because we're trying to kill Jesus. We know we've been fucked up so bad that somebody gonna want to do something. And we need to kill all the males that will stand up and fight. And for the third time in history, they're specifically after the male children. I'm telling you, there is an attack on male children and men in general because we're the fighters. We the ones that people look for to stand up the backbone. They always kill the strongest slave in front of the weaker ones. So that they can produce women who will produce children to be afraid to stand up and fight. I think we have to wrap up, so I'm just gonna let Todd say something. Um, can she she had her hand up like the whole Oh you did, I'm sorry, go ahead.
basic, I mean, most of us accept, most of us understand this, not everybody. So it institutionalized. And so you step into it when you step into any institution. <coughs> so if you're a teacher or a family or a student who wants to get a quality education in a public school, which every child deserves, a quality education, a free quality, because not all of us can pull our kids out of school and go to private school. Not all of us can stay at home and educate our children because we're working to support and feed them. So who pulls their kids out of the public schools and moves them into private school and educates them at home? There's a certain group of people that have that flexibility. But many of us who don't have that economic flexibility depend on quality public education. But we do not have masses of people standing up in the streets and fighting for our children to get quality public education. So there's something about that we because we know. It's just marching. Yeah, I know, and I was there marching. I mean, all my life I've been marching for quality education because it's education is power. It's power we and choice. So our kids who don't get quality education can't afford to be pushed into a private school or homeschooled deserve the same power that those other kids are getting. Some of us placed ourselves in those settings because we wanted to give them that power. We wanted to fight the bureaucracy and we wanted to provide for those students and protect them and be their advocates and educate them so that they would have that power. The critical thinking you're talking about. Because without that, you're powerless. You know what's sad though? That the public educational system was actually good until around 
started talking to me. I was on point that she just broke down to what it is that she's doing. And what I'm talking about, you know, I mean, I see my eyes on the same thing. I'm working with you. 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 I'm working with you